Right. So now with the with this now we can begin the the topic of nonlinear optimization, which is now our most general optimization problem, which is where we have say you are minimizing some function f over a set over a set say s. Right. Now what we need uh, for this sort of problem is is to is to say find a general a very general condition so that uh, which characterizes uh, a point x star for an uh, that is a local minimum. So, suppose x star is a local minimum, suppose x star is a local minimum, then what uh, then we need a condition that this this sort of x star must satisfy a necessary condition for this this uh, this sort of x star all right. So, now this condition is given through what is called uh, it the tangent cone of the set. So, I will so I will define this uh, this for you what is what is a tangent cone. So, the tangent cone at a point x star for the set S is is a collection of vectors d such that such that there exists a sequence x k lying in S x k converging to x star and a sequence say tau k uh, that is positive, so it decreases and decreases to 0 such that d can be expressed as this limit, d can be expressed as the limit x k minus x star divided by tau k. So, the tangent cone is the is is those vectors d for which there exists a sequence x k in S converging to x star and a sequence tau k of these are these are scalars ok positive scalars converging to 0 such that d can be written as in this form it is the limit as k tends to infinity of x k minus x star divided by tau k. Now, what is uh, so can you make a before I uh, before we see what this this set actually means can you make a few simple observations. So, do you see that uh, d must be uh, the uh, sorry the, the set T x star s ok this tangent what we call the tangent cone do you see that this must be a cone it is a it is it is very easy to see that because if I scale if I look at a scaled version of d that is that always that always exists in this in this set because all I need to do to uh, construct such a d would be to just simply scale the tau k appropriately right. So, if I look at say alpha times d then uh, if I want to get alpha times d all I have to do is divide the tau k by alpha and that will uh, that would give me alpha times d right. So, the tangent cone is always a cone. always a cone. Now, what does this set look like, well, but it is a cone, but what sort of set is it. So, to get some uh, some intuition on that let let us let us try to uh, let us try to see what this these uh, this x this particular thing which is the limit of x k minus x star divided by tau k what is that actually saying. So, suppose I have a I have a, a region like this. And suppose 
um, let us let us begin here let us suppose this is my point x star. Now, what is this? So, this is my set S and this is my point x star. So, now for this sort of point what is the tangent cone? So, this is a point x star that lies in the interior of S right. So, x star lies x star belongs to the interior of S ok. Now, in this case what is the tangent cone? Now, the tangent cone if you look at the definition what it says is well it is those directions d such that you can construct a sequence x k converging to x star and a sequence tau k going down to 0 such that d can be written as x k minus x star divided by tau k. Now, x k minus x star. So, if, if here is my point x star and here is my point x k. So, x k is a sequence that is eventually converging to x star. So, it is a sequence that approaches x star. So, so here is the vector x k minus x star right it is uh, it is a vector I can think of it is origin shifted to x star and pointing towards x k. So, here is my vector x k minus x star now x k minus x star as x k goes to 0 uh, sorry as, as x k goes to x star x k minus x star will go to 0 right. But what about x k minus x star divided by tau k? What is what would happen to that? Where would that end up pointing? So, suppose let, let me amplify the picture here. Suppose here is my point x star and here is the sequence x k that converges to x star, right? Here is suppose x 100 then x uh, 1000 etcetera etcetera and eventually it comes eventually it uh, these are the various x k's and they eventually converge to x star right. So, so the distance x k minus x star or the vector x k minus x star that vector is eventually going to become 0, but if you look at x k minus x star divided by tau k what where would that end up pointing? So, the the way to think of this is that you can think of tau k as keeping track of time in some sense. So, and x k is a trajectory it is a point it is a point that is moving and it is eventually converging to x star tau k is keeping track of time. So, since x k converges to x star the numerator is going to 0, but numerator divided by time would be what it would be the it would be the rate of change or or equivalently the it would be the tangent to this particular trajectory right. So, it is the so x k minus x star divided by tau k as k tends to infinity would end up pointing along this sort of direction the direction the limiting direction by which you approached x star along this trajectory. So, if for instance you did so here was x star and you did something like this suppose you you did this this is this is this is and eventually came along the eventually approached x star along this particular direction the limiting value of that direction something like this is the is where that d would end up pointing. And of course, because this is a direction you can always scale it you can measure time in any units you can always scale uh, scale the axis of time and that will give you a longer arrow and a longer longer vector d that's why this is a cone right so so this uh, every every direction every d in in the tangent cone is a direction from which one can approach x star from within from within s while staying within the set s the directions by which you can approach 
uh, x star is uh, that the set of such directions is the tangent cone. Yes. 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 So, so I was about to come to that question. Good. So now come back to this question. So suppose suppose x star is in the interior of s star s. So x star lies in the interior of s. Then in that case, what would be the tangent cone? Then it would be R n because you can approach x star uh, from any possible direction or uh, any 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 direction because the, the, the entire ball uh, in R n can be fit inside the set S. So, you can approach direct uh, you know radially along any direction towards that towards x star from inside the ball right. So, so if x star belongs to the interior then is a subset of so then this is then the tangent cone is equal to rn the rn is the ambient space of s right so so what this means is that uh, well for points in the interior this uh, the tangent cone is is given trivially it's always always rn now what about uh, what if the point is somewhere here so what if you have your if the point x star is now here on the boundary then what would be what would be the what would be the tangent cone now every direction so if you are on the boundary and you have if the set has an interior and you are on the boundary of it and you, it is possible to approach from the interior to the point x star then all such possible directions will be in all of these possible directions are included in the in the tangent cone and you can keep including directions that just graze past the boundary of the set and you can keep doing that till the point where eventually you actually become just tangent to the set and all of these are possible directions by which uh, you can uh, you can approach you can approach the point x star right so if you are so if you so let me just draw this more neatly if you are if your point x star is here on the boundary right so then this 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 this, this all of this so in short all, this entire thing here would be the tangent cone all of these directions right but then it's a little more complicated because of uh, uh, because of uh, because of some reasons and i will i will explain to you uh, what the reasons are see let's suppose you take uh, uh, suppose you take this sort of set suppose here is my set s now a point here in the interior we know what the tangent cone is so my set is this box in r r2 if i have my point in the interior then uh, this point uh, the tangent cone is just r2 because i can approach from any any direction now if i if i'm here then what would be the tangent cone it would be the it would be this particular half space right it's this half space it's this half space because i can approach from all of these directions the half space formed by this uh, this this face of 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 my box now what if i am here at this corner if i am at this corner then actually the the tangent cone would then be these two this this particular so so this this cone here would be my tangent cone right so now the re the reason this has changed is because on in both cases you are on the boundary okay in both cases you are on the boundary all right here on when you are on this boundary you have exactly one tangent to the to the set 
whereas when you are at this boundary what is the tangent to this set there is no the tangent is actually not defined what you have is tangents to this set this particular surface and tangents to this particular surface and from there we are trying to somehow get to the tangent of uh, at this at this corner point right so so you have to be a little uh, this is where the complications start begin to arise that so if you have a simple uh, a simple uh, you know if you have just a uh, in in simplest of cases it does happen that yeah you can think of you can just draw a tangent at that particular point and and try to get the get the tangent cone by looking at the tang uh, at the tangent but if you if you don't have differentiability and so on at that of the boundary at that point then you, you you know you end up having problems with the in defining the in 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 visualizing the tangent cone right so i will tell i'll give you more examples of why this gets com uh, why the tangent cone is a very deceptive object so if you have just a simple uh, if you have only let me give this on the side and start on a new page so suppose suppose let's let's consider uh, let's consider something like this so suppose we have uh, suppose i have a circle this is my origin okay a circle without the interior and i consider a point on the boundary now what is the tangent cone for this point it is only the tangent plane right only this particular plane that would be the tangent if i have a circle but with the interior considered and i st and i take this point out here as my point x star then so circle with the interior then the tangent cone is this half plane half space right the half space uh, on that lies on this particular side this the side on which the circle lies okay now suppose i did the following suppose i have one circle here okay and suppose i took another circle like this okay, and i included say the interior of both so i have this interior included this interior now all of these points here that i am marking shading with red they are now part of both both circles so let's call this set s1 let's call this set s2 the red region is part of both circles so if i take a point here suppose or if i take a point let's begin with a point like this so take a point here what is the what's the tangent cone at this point at this point tangent okay tangent cone with respect to what set so i am we are looking for the tangent cone at so let with respect to the set the common region with respect to the set s1 intersection s2 okay so this point it belongs to the common region what is the tangent cone at this point it's it's it is again going to be this this half space what is the tangent cone at at this point so if x star is this one which which lies on the boundary of both circles so what what you would you might uh, you know visually you might be able to figure out that like, okay well i should be looking at this one i should be looking at this one and let me take the intersection of these two the common region behind between these two and the common region would be uh, would be this so that would give me the tangent cone at at this point at this point x star right so from by looking at examples like this you would you 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 are led to sort of thinking that this is actually the same as doing effectively just same as doing tangent cone of the intersection you would think is equal to equal to this the intersection of you just look at individual sets look at their tangent cones 
and then when you get to a point that lies in both uh, look at the common part of the tangent cones of the two of the two tangent cones ok, but you will see soon see that this fails miserably ok. So, let us consider this here is one circle and here is another circle that touches this circle at exactly one point ok, here is my it is. So, these two circles are tangent to each other here is my point x star. So, my and I am including the interior of the circle. So, this is my set S 1 this is my set S 2. So, now what is S 1 intersection S 2? S 1 intersection S 2 they intersect at only one point then my S 1 intersection S 2 is just the point x star ok. Now, what is the tangent cone at x star of S 1 with respect to S 1 intersection S 2? It is it is 0 only the vector 0 right it is always a cone. So, it has it the vector only the vector 0 because there is only one point in the set x k is equal to x star. So, it, you are always going to get 0, but now what if you did your intersection formula? What would you get from the intersection? So, you look at the intersection. So, here is the tangent cone with respect to s s 2 and this on the other side is the tangent cone with respect to s 1 right and you take the intersection what you would get is just the tangent plane. So, if you look at t of x star with respect to s 1 intersection t of x star with respect to s 2 that is equal that is equal to the tangent the entire tangent plane. at x star and what is. So, what has happened here the intersection of individual tangent cones has turned out to be much larger than the true tangent cone. Now, you can see this is this can very quickly get slippery. So, when you have multiple surfaces intersecting you it is not possible to get get to the tangent cone of the common region by just looking at each of them individually and then taking the intersection. It is possible that you will get end up getting a larger set in that case ok. So, this is this is this is one of the key reasons why study of tangent cones you need to do carefully. There is another reason also I will come to that uh, I will I will come to that in the next class. But the 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 main uh, so the main the main sort of uh, slippery part of tangent cones is this. Okay. Now, why do tangent cones play such an important role? And I will just I will state the result for you. It's not that hard to prove. The reason they uh, they play such an important role is uh, in in optimization is the following. So suppose so here so here's the main theorem in which they appear. So suppose x star is a local minimum of this optimization minimum minimizing f from x in s x in s then you must have that grad f of x star transpose d is greater than or equal to 0 for all d in the tangent cone. So, the gradient of f at x star transpose d is greater than or equal to 0 for all d in the tangent cone uh, uh, at x star with respect to s ok. And the proof is very easy. So, the proof is so, suppose uh, ok suppose it is not the case. suppose this is not true then in that case there exists a d in the tangent cone such that transpose d is 
is less than 0 ok. Ok. Now, d belongs to the tangent cone since d belongs to the tangent cone you can there exists um, your sequence x k converging to x star. So, x k in s and a tau k decreasing to 0 such that if I look at tau k d tau k d is all is equal to x k minus x star plus something that is small o of tau k. We have de seen this notation before the small o notation small o just means that small o of tau k is a quantity which when divided by tau k also goes to 0 right. So, uh, tau k d is is therefore equal to x k minus x star plus small o of tau k all right. So, what and moreover by Taylor's theorem f of x k is equal to f of x star plus gradient of f at x star transpose x k minus x star plus small o of norm of x k minus x star. So, now if I put if I substitute this uh, this in I would get that f of x k is equal to f of x star plus gradient of f at x star transpose d into tau k plus something which that is small o of tau k. So, the small o of x k minus x star I put that in I that will soon that will then become small o of tau k right by, by substituting. So, after substituting this here I get that this is equal to. So, f of x k is equal to f of x star plus gradient of f x star transpose d in uh, tau k plus something that is small o of tau k, which means that f of x k is equal to f of x star plus tau k times grad f of x star transpose d plus small o of tau k divided by tau k. And now, small o of tau k divided by tau k is a quantity that this is a quantity that uh, and this is a quantity that goes to 0 and and since the first quantity is, is strictly negative by assumption. So, by assumption the first quantity is strictly negative the second quantity is going to 0, so which means that eventually for large enough k. So, let me just complete it here for large k f of x k would be less than f of x star, but then x k converges to x star which means that if you are if you uh, if uh, if x k is converging to x star and but for large enough k f of x k becomes less than f of x star then it cannot be that x star is a local minimum. So, this is a contradiction. Right. So, this is a contradiction. So, if I, so which means that this must be the case. So, so if uh, suppose x star is a local minimum of this I, I forgot to write here f belongs to C 1. So, that is differentiable then it then we must have that grad f transpose d is greater than equal to 0 for all d in the tangent group. So, you can see here this is a very general purpose condition any set any function so long as the function is differentiable 
you it must satisfy this. But the problem uh, that we encounter is that if often our sets are are defined using the intersection of multiple sets and we do not know how to get to the tangent cones of the intersection ok. So, that is that is the next thing we need to sort of encounter uh, uh, overcome and then we will be able to write out optimality conditions for for optimization problems ok. Ok, so I will end here now.